This is the second battle in the finals between Panda Warrior and Diplomat, and this time the tables are turned. We have Diplomat commanding the Goths. He has three Gothic Warband on the flanks, backed up by three Germanic Horse, a very potent combination. In the center he has two Germanic Pikes, behind those he has Noble Germanic Swords and Germanic Warband. Germanic Hunters, Gothic General, two more Germanic Warband. Gothic Warband, Noble Germanic Swords, and three Germanic Horse. Nice army composition. For Panda Warrior, we have four Scolae Palatinae, we ha or Scolae Palatina. We have uh, three Catafractari, two Fundatores, Magister Militum. We have Armigeri, Armigeri Defensores in the back. Six of those tanky sword infantry. Uh, then we have Protector Protectoris Domestici, cheap tanky infantry, and what you'll notice on the Roman units is that overall they get a lot of armor and the defensive stats for the price, but they are o underwhelming on the charge compared to the compared to the infantry of other factions. But they can hold exceedingly well, especially when using their Testudo abilities. So in terms of infantry, the advantage definitely goes to uh, definitely goes to diplomats here. In terms of cavalry, they are um, sort of evenly matched, but not really. I mean, uh, Panda Warrior does have more cavalry. He also has shock cavalry, whereas diplomat does not. And I kind of wonder why diplomat would. Bring this many axe units in addition to his uh, in addition to his gothic warbands. Uh, the fair effect might be nice on them, but here we have Fundatores firing, and the Fundatore fire is actually going to reduce the speed and charge speed of the units of of uh, diplomat. So uh, again, Panda rushing out through his own units. A diplomat tries to respond, but he's just not able to respond. He's blobbing up. And this this destroys the Gothic Warband. The Gothic Warband are great units, but this is what destroys them. Panda Warrior adopting a defensive position here, but he got great charges off on the flanks here. He's able to pour in his Armigeri, uh, Armigeri Defensores, and although Diplomat did manage to get in here and destroy some Fenditores, uh, the flanks here of Diplomat are getting absolutely overpowered. Gothic Warband losing so many cavalry charges from Panda hitting the squishy units of Diplomat. Here comes Diplomat with a few charges of his own. Panda just able to turn around and charge the Germanic horse. The Armageri Defensores are going to lose men here but somewhat mitigated by the fact that there were cavalry units in there for Panda. The Gothic Warband losing now against the Armageri. On the flanks here, the Magister Militum needs to be careful because he does not like fighting uh, Scolar Palatina. The, the Gothic General... Uh, oh, this is a Gothic General, sorry. <laughs> uh, so he can uh, he can definitely do well against Palatina when the Palatina are stationary. So if they got a charge, that would be bad for the General, but now they are stationary, so it's fine. The Magister Militum is the General that needs to be very careful about enemy cavalry because he doesn't have a bonus against them. Germanic horsemen coming in here, but the center, the center is just disappearing now for diplomats and his uh, his goths. Brace being used here to increase bonuses against cavalry. But yeah, at this point, there is just not a whole lot that diplomats can do. Most of his units are engaged, they are dead or dying, and uh, the, p the more aggressive playstyle here by Panda Warrior paid off against the very squishy Gothic Warband. Then the cavalry was able to do an amazing job, and then the infantry of Rome, uh, even though not as strong as the Gothic Warband on the charge, they were able to move in and do a lot of damage. So, Panda Warrior takes it, he is still a very good player in Attila, brought some very good builds, used them well. Uh, Diplomat is... I have lost count of how many times Diplomat has been in either 
finals or bronze finals, but it's it's many. So he consistently makes it very far in tournaments. Uh, but this was this was interesting because worth noting is that this tournament was uh, hosted just a few hours after the release of Attila, basically. So this is a day one tournament where players have gotten an idea of which builds work and which don't, but too little time to know exactly. But uh, many of the players were aware, of course, of the strength of cavalry and the strength of the Tugmata cavalry. And the Tugmata are so powerful that they have actually been banned in some recent tournaments, and I think they might be banned or severely limited in uh, other tournaments as well. So I hope you enjoyed these battles. I think they were a lot of good. Uh, there were a lot of good ones. The pace of cavalry uh, versus infantry combat is something I really like. You cannot get sword infantry charged by cavalry. You cannot get any infantry charged by cavalry, basically, uh, unless they are using pikes and uh, being braced and stationary. But um, I quite like the aggressive playstyle this allows, and uh, just straight up infantry spamming doesn't work anymore, but I do have some concerns about straight up cavalry spamming, because that definitely works, unless, uh, well, if an opponent doesn't just pike box, then you're going to run into trouble, but uh, that's the way I feel the balance of the game is moving. If you basically can win without bringing any or very little infantry, and you're coming up against strong cavalry factions, pikes are going to be a very viable counter to that. So we might start seeing box versus cavalry spam battles, and that's just not fun for anyone. So yeah, I do like how the cavalry works. Some of the cavalry is too strong. Uh, but overall, I think Attila, in terms of multiplayer, is a more fun game than uh, Rome 2 ever was, basically, and certainly than Rome 2 is at the moment. Strength and honor.